What's good YouTube? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to do reactions inside of OBS Studio. This is one of the first tutorials I'm doing with the three screen setup. Everything looking pretty nice, pretty cool in here, I ain't gonna lie. I've been trying to get a little bit more, you know, aesthetically pleasing background, even though I don't be using it like that. Normally just be me with the green screen situation, but uh, yeah, got a little something extra in here, the picture, the, you know, the little, the ambiance is looking a little bit ambiance if, uh, if i do say so myself all right so we're gonna get straight to it you want to go into your settings right here you want to go to the video tab it's the first thing you want to go to you want to make sure this is what you want it to be so if you want it to be 1080p match that 1080p 1080p but if you want to upscale in here you can go ahead and do that in here as well never upscale or rescale anywhere but your video tab is going to be doing it off your graphics card if you do it over here inside the output section that thing gonna be doing it off your CPU. You ain't got time for that, trust me. So if you wanna upscale to 1440p, which is 2K, you can do that, type that in, or you can go ahead and do 4K upscale if you would like. You can even choose whatever your monitor is. So if you have a 1440p monitor, you wanna choose that here. If you have a 4K monitor, you wanna choose that here and then make it match. Just do what you want to do here so you don't have to do it somewhere else later. And then right here, we choose the FPS that we want. If you want to do 60, go ahead and choose 60. If your webcam can only do 30, you can choose 30 if you want to. Just keep in mind that if you're showing your desktop screen when you're doing reactions and stuff like that, some people feel queasy or weird when it's not at least 60 because it's going to be looking a little jittery, a little not crisp, a little bit not smooth. It's not going to, it's not going to look how they need it to look or how you probably want it to look. So you can go ahead and do 60. If you ever run into problems with 60, you can drop it down, but usually 60 will be all right. As far as the advanced tab right here, you want to make sure that you don't do too much in here. You want to make sure your color space is set to 709. Any spot that it ever asks for your color space, you want it to be 709 and you want the color range to be limited right here. And then I don't do anything else in there. As far as the audio tab is concerned, in here you can choose to add your microphone, your desktop audios, different things like that if you choose to. And what this will do is anytime you make a new scene, you won't have to add them in as different sources. It'll automatically have these different sound devices in your different scenes. But with certain capture cards and stuff like that, you have to add it in as a source. So just choose and pick what you want to choose. So right now I could choose it as a microphone right here and just add in my Elgato HD60X. But if I do it in here, I might not want it to be in every scene because I might not want it to be heard in every scene. So that's why I normally just choose my microphone in here and keep it simple with that. As far as the sample rate is concerned up at the top, I choose 48 kilohertz, but you can look up whatever the website you're gonna be uploading to but I'll go ahead and choose the 48 kilohertz. Then as far as the output tab, you wanna go ahead and switch from simple to advanced. And then you wanna come over to recording. When you get into the recording tab right here, I choose MP4, never had any problems with it, but if you have problems with corrupting and stuff like that and losing files, you can choose MKV, and then you can have OBS actually remux the files back to a different um, format after the fact. But I go ahead and just choose MP4, that works fine for me. As far as the video encoder situation, I go ahead and choose Apple VT HEVC hardware encoder. And as far as if you're wondering about the difference between HEVC and H.264, HEVC is gonna get you a very nice quality with less bit rate, so it can look as good as H.264, but if you want to, you can give HEVC the same bit rate you would H.264. So I record in 70,000 regardless. So I could lower that 70,000 and get the same equivalent as I would with a higher bit rate with the H.264. And then as far as X264 is concerned, this is going to be giving you different choices and different options that you can mess with and fool around with if you run into problems with some of the other choices. So right now we see we selected it here and then if we go down we see we can have all these different options but we have this the cpu preset if you use your x264 option 
on whether it's Windows or if it's on a Mac, you will have these same choices right here. So I have an M1 Max MacBook Pro 32 gigs of RAM. This bad boy is no joke. I've been able to stream medium to Twitch with certain different uh, resolutions. Now, it might not be able to handle doing that with 4K or something wild as far as certain recordings, but in certain circumstances, you can actually use this and get a very, very crisp quality. So as far as ultra fast, if your computer cannot handle doing faster or very fast, you might have to bump it up to see if it can use it and then do it that way. And also on top of that, the simple fact of the matter is more bit rate is going to be required to make the ones at the top look good. And then as you go down a little bit more and more, less bit rate is required to make them look good. So I've been able to stream to Twitch with about 5,000 bit rate and use medium on this setting and works perfectly fine. No issues, no problems, but that's with this particular computer. As far as the recording situation goes though, I will go ahead and switch mine back to what I normally choose. And I choose the Apple VT ATVC encoder. And then I don't rescale in here. Do not ever rescale in here unless you've got a beast of a CPU. And then right here, I choose CBR, 70,000 kilobits per second, two keyframe intervals. That's what most websites would like you to have, whether you're live streaming or uploading videos. And then as far as the profile, this is main. And then this right here is 10 bit. And this right here is going to be like super duper more powerful than just regular 10 bit. I don't have neither option going on as far as what my setup has going on with it so i just choose main and that's all you got to do as far as the usb frames leave this checked and then over here in the audio section right here you see that we have the audio bit rate you can choose whether or not you want to change this um the website is going to pretty much change it to what they want it to be anyway but i go ahead and change mine to 320 for whatever tracks that i'm going to be using then as far as stream if you did want to stream you can just choose whichever one you want to use log in and it asks you for your code and stuff like that or you can choose to use the stream key and obviously you would get that off the website that you're streaming from as far as the general tab i don't fool with a lot of none of this so i just leave it how it is for the most part but one thing in general that you can do, if you would like betas, you can choose this. So right here, you can choose the stable latest releases only, or you can choose the betas. Then you can choose to automatically check for it on startup as well. You can choose whichever one you're more comfortable with. So that's how you can do that. And so once we get all the settings done and situated, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in your webcam. So you just go to the plus icon right here. You want to go to the video capture device. Then once you do that, you want to name it webcam. And then you simply go ahead and select it. So since I already have it right here, we're going to turn it on right there. And then if I go to properties on this bad boy, this is where you get to select the different options. So right here, you can choose to either use the preset if it gives you that option, or you can choose to uncheck it. And then you can choose the resolution right here. So I chose 1080p, then I chose 60 FPS, and then I go ahead and choose the actual best option for my input format. So webcams will have different options, but I choose the best option that I can choose for my webcam. This is the most uncompressed thing that I can choose. And then as far as my color space, 709 video range limited, and I do not use buffering. And the reason why the webcam is looking a little crazy is because I don't have the ring light on blasting my eyeballs right now. So the settings that I have set for the webcam right now is literally how it should be for the ring light to be on. So just ignore that. You see these little hot spots right there, like on my hair, you see those little hot spots on the Elgato face cam. Whenever you have the ISO cranked up too much and it's too dark, you'll start to see these imperfections with the actual sensor of the camera. But if I turn my ring light on, gets rid of the hot spot that was in the air and everything's looking pretty cool using the iPhone XS for a different angle right here on the charger because that bad boy about to die. I was going to use the 13 Pro Max, but I chose to do this just to see what it's going to look like. Next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and add your display capture. So I'm going to get rid of me real quick. The display capture, you add it pretty similar to the webcam. Hit the plus icon right here, and then you want to choose the Mac OS screen capture right there. So once you choose that, you can go ahead and add it to where you want it to be. And so right here, we see I already have it small, but whenever you first get this on here, it's going to be quite humongous. So if I reset the transform, it's going to be bigger depending on what type of screen you're using. So I'm using the MacBook. So the MacBook has a bigger resolution than my actual 1080p canvas. 
So that's why it's going to be way bigger when you first pop it up, but you can just resize it. And then on top of that, you can also go into properties right here. If you have more than one screen connected, you can choose the different screens. So I can go in and choose whichever screen that I want to show and it will show it right there. Looking nice, looking cool. And then on top of that, you can also change between application capture or you can choose window capture. If you're doing the display capture, be mindful that anything you show on your display is going to show up. So if you're live streaming, don't have no sensitive stuff come up, please, 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 because you're never going to you're never going to have a fun time if that happens. But if you're on the display capture only, this is how you can live stream or do video recordings and actually go full screen with YouTube. So if you opened up YouTube, let me go ahead and make this a different size right there. So set that about right there. And then once I open up YouTube, I'm already over here chilling on somebody's channel. I can hit the back button real quick. Hit the back button again. And now we're sitting on one of my videos. If I go to full screen, it'll full screen it. So that's the only way you can do full screen view when you're doing a reaction is if inside of a Mac, you choose to do the full screen. If you choose to do the application or the window type stuff, it may or may not give you the right situation. So say for instance, I go to the window capture right here. If I choose this window, I can choose it right there and it'll show everything that it's showing. But the moment I go to full screen, it's not going to work. It's going to ask you to go ahead and click to exit full screen. So that's why I said you want to make sure if you're going to do full screen videos to just go ahead and do the display capture. Now, if you want to do your reactions and not do it inside of full screen mode and you just want to keep it on the actual web page, all you got to do is hit the alt key or the options key and then just simply size it to what the video is. And then once you do that, you don't have to worry with it no more. And then every time you go to different video pages, it'll stay the size that, you know, you got it as. So like right now, I could just hit play on that or skip through the video, stuff like that, and it'll do like it's supposed to do. And then bringing up your webcam again right here, you can move it to whatever side you want it to be on. So say I'm looking at the screen to my left, but I'm looking a different direction than the video on the screen. That's not cool. Don't do that because it makes the viewer feel like y'all not looking at the same thing. So you just drag it over to the side that you're going to be looking at. And then right there, I'm looking at the video, reacting to the video. It's looking like I'm looking in that direction. So it's a little bit more, you know, a little bit more comfortable of a situation to actually be watching. So, yeah, that is what it is. If you enjoyed the video, please send the like button. It's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.